Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. I'm Tom Dorado, and the Cowboys played host to number 22, Southern Mississippi, this past weekend. Bob, you said it all along, all week long. Got to take advantage of opportunities. You can't turn it over. Field position, all going to play a role, and they did. Well, they did, Tom, and uh, obviously when you're ranked uh, number 22, uh, came in as a good, solid football team, and, and we had to go out and uh, really play better. We had to execute better. Uh, we had to take advantage of the opportunities that we had in, in the first and second half down in the 10-yard line. Uh, and in short, we had to make, some, make better plays. And in short, you did have opportunities. That's the good news out of the play yes. right there. We have a lot of highlights to show you. Stay tuned. We're on the Bob Simmons Show. We're glad to have you with us. We're back after this opening. Time out. The Bob Simmons the most complete, up-to-date, and accurate information on your Oklahoma State Cowboys, your internet destination is www.okstate.com, the official athletic website of Oklahoma State University. There were really no surprises, Bob, I don't think, as we come back and talk about that Southern Miss uh, game. The fact that you knew how good they were defensively, their stats indicated they brought a great defense in the past two weeks, and they make it, they're going to make it tough on everybody. Well, they've made it tough on everybody they played, Tom, and uh, the fact is that uh, the one thing that we felt going in uh, is that uh, we had to play an exceptional ball game, especially offensively, uh, seeing that their defense did not give up uh, many points. You see us here starting off on defense, and we do a real good job. Uh, you know, it was blowing, the wind was blowing down their time, and, and, and they end up uh, deferring. And so uh, uh, you see us coming out here and trying to put, now that's, uh, you know, they call pass interference. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, I think that's a key call, but our defense does step up, come back, and get them uh, in a situation where uh, it's third down. No, it's second down here. Nice play by Marcus. He comes across and strips him. This is third and 13. This is where, uh, you know, I think we, we have to be a little, uh, smart in terms of putting our defense in, in uh, a poor position. Chris uh, Massey was out of position there. Uh, we, we call a, a blitz, didn't get there quick enough. Uh, and when that happens, uh, you know, it causes uh, the ball to go over the top here. Third but, down was a problem in the early Well, game. third down was, was a big problem because uh, uh, they converted third downs. You can see here on offense with first and 10 to go back inside with Reggie. Uh, this is the beginning of the ball game. We, we, we really felt that, that we could run the ball straight at them, and we did. We need our receivers downfield uh, to, to do a better job blocking. I know if, if Woods makes a block on number nine, that, that ball may end up going to the end zone. Good run by Reggie. We go back inside here. You can see here where you know he picks up about two and three yards. Uh, uh, we get in uh, third and three. Now, this is, this is where, you know, in, in our quarterback's checking, we, we, we got to get to uh, – uh, a better check in terms of maybe running the ball, get us in the fourth and one. Uh, the percentage is on fade, but when when we when they punt, uh, Cooper does a nice job, and then we get great field position at time. Uh, we run back uh, with a, with a uh, attack play uh, to uh, uh, Reggie. Then we come back with a reverse, which is well played by their defense. Uh, now we're back outside of of uh, field goal. Uh, and then Seth comes in and, you know, he does a great job of stroking that kick. Uh, and we're on the board, 7-3, but that's an example of being down in that area again and coming out with three points. Got the three, uh, though. Still uh, an emotional swing. At least you got something out of it. Back on the defense. Well, back on defense and, and uh, you know, we're very fortunate. They, they call a, uh, a drop ball mm -hmm. here. Uh, it's third and, and long here and he scrambles. but. Uh, I think that's uh, Marcus does a get, uh, good job on the pressure, uh, making him force him to kick. And, and now what happens here is that we, you know, we have a rule uh, right now is that we don't back up inside the 10-yard line. We try to teach our young players that, and, and Gabe uh, unfortunately did that. But our defense stiffens up uh, and does a good job on their first two running plays. You can see guys uh, flying to the ball. I think that's Chris Tyler, Jaquay, guys around the ball. And this is a big play. Because Jaquay comes around the corner, gets a strip, uh, Brown catches the ball, and this is important now. If we can knock guys down, we knock one guy down, and Chris is asking for the ball, what he needs to do is turn around and block. Uh, and then on the, on the wide copy that we watched that, if, if our guys are blocking those, those other people, this big guy may score. Uh, because he's looking for somebody, he's, he's not listening to Chris right yeah, now. Right. And Chris should be turning back, blocking, and uh, not only Chris, there are some other guys that sh probably should have thrown some key blocks, we might have scored, but that's great field position. Uh, we come back inside with uh, a zone play here, and uh, you can see their defense stiffens 
uh, two calls. Uh, we come back with a quarterback, and, and uh, we'd like for Tony to really throw the ball away, but not throw it up. And, and uh, you know, there's another missed opportunity uh, for his time. Uh, you know, we're on the field, a great defensive effort. Now we come back down, we give it back to him. Uh, and we have to be better than that in order to be a pretty good offense. In the space uh, of about three minutes, you had two major. Two major mistakes. Yeah. Uh, a breakdown here uh, in terms of our alignment uh, in our secondary. Uh, they come back down the field with a long pass. Uh, they come down with a third situation. You know what? The ball never crosses the goal line here. And, and obviously it comes out, but you know, with the officiating, they go in 14-3. to uh, And uh, we go in, we, we, we talk about our adjustments and what we have to do and how we got to come out and, and play. Uh, and it's important that our kids do that. Uh, we come back out and you see our, our, our defense uh, do a good job of knocking down balls, stiffens a little bit, and they run a draw. And Dwayne Levels do a good job of, of tackling for a, a short game, if not any. Uh, third down situation here. Uh, he's scrambling. We got pressure on him here. Uh, uh, he was across the line of scrimmage time, yeah, I remember correct. on that, mm -hmm. but we, again, our defense comes out almost, almost that blocked one. that one. Yeah. I think that's why the Carter does a good job here, and, and uh, hey, uh, I tell you, when that ball hits the grass, it dies. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony does a good job of looking for uh, Jamal coming across. Our offense started to pick up some momentum. Uh, you can tell by their, their body language that they feel good about the what they're doing. Field position was better field position in the second half. Much better in the second half time. And uh, Tony's making good decisions, good pass there to, to uh, uh, Marcellus. He, he scrambles here, keeps his feet. You know, uh, and, you know this is what Tony can, can do well. Uh, and again, he, you know, with his speed, and, and he gets us down uh, to about the, uh, I want to say about the 13-yard line. We're back down in, in, in that area where we really got to start making some plays. and, and uh, it came over the top. I don't know if Reggie caught it or not. Yeah, I think he did. Heck of a catch. But again, time we we, we uh, uh, settle for a field goal, a one one that we missed. You know, that's one of Seth two misses. Uh, come out with no points back in that area. Uh, they come down. Uh, you see them on the sprint out. Defense still trying to apply pressure here. Uh, our defensive back falls down, and this this is critical here. He falls down and. Uh, they, they draw, drive the ball back down to the 10-yard line and, and now throw over the head of our, our, our coverage, and they get on the board. The only touchdown that they scored uh, the second half other than the, the, the tip ball that they had late in the ball late game. The game right. uh, but, you know, we're still in this ball game. We got a chance to, to, to win it, We got you know, but we got to start making plays, and I think that's Corey Carter, mm -hmm. or Curry Jackson on a good play. Uh, you see uh, uh, Tony out here scrambling. Uh, he, he throws to T.D. Bryant. Uh, you know, offense is moving the ball. Texas got to be a little better. Steps up again, and when he does that, you can see he takes off. Good block by Reggie, uh, knocking the guy down. And, and then he, again, we're back inside. I don't want to say the 15-yard line Once again. Once again, and, uh, uh, this is a first down throw to Curry Jackson. He does a good job of bullying his way. You know, our kids are fighting now. You know, there's no, there's no give up in them. And there's a key call. We take this ball right down to the three-yard line and a phantom flag comes out uh, for holding. And, and uh, uh, you know, you watch film and, and you look for those kinds of things, but uh, obviously it's hard for a side judge to call holding. And these uh, were Conference USA officials, correct? Yeah, yeah, and again, I, and I know officiating is a tough job, but you know, we end up selling for, for, for three points. Uh, we kick off and get them in real poor field position. And you can see our defense here. This is a, a, a key. You know, you got an opportunity for a safety, but because of where he placed his hands on a guy's face mask and jerked it, uh, we end up getting a, uh, uh, a penalty. They bring it out uh, to the 10-yard line. Our defense still stiffens up. Uh, we get the ball back on, on offense, and I think uh, at that point in time, Oso. Tony's shoulders got hurt a little bit, and we brought in Oso, uh And Oso checks at the line of scrimmage, and he throws it and out here to uh, – uh, Woods, you know, we have to start running our routes uh, a little bit deeper. Here's a uh, point where Oslo pulls it down and scrambles and picks up about seven here and goes back to, to uh, uh, Jamal Fobbs. Does a great job of running with the ball. Uh, he gets us back down in, in, into that, that scoring area. Uh, you know, ball game's over with uh, time. I walk out to Jeff and tell me he had a good football team and, and obviously 
uh, the thing that we wanted to do, especially in front of our home fans, uh, in a game like that is to come out and play much better. No question, the ushers were frustrated, coaches were frustrated, but it's too early in the year yeah. <laughs> to be totally uh, turned around. You've still got a lot ahead of you and a lot of improvement. To well, make. you know, Tom, we're going to have to improve. We're, we're two and one. Uh, we're going to talk to our kids about where that improvement has to come from mm -hmm. on Monday and, and, and really get ready for our conference uh, oh. run. And it begins on Saturday against Texas. You know, when you talk about the great players in Oklahoma State football history, you're talking about the likes of Bob Fenimore, the All-American who really was part of the golden gridiron era of the mid-40s. Recently, you had a chance to sit down with Bob and talk about a number of things. And this week, we bring you part one of the visit on the Oklahoma Farm Bureau Insurance 2-Minute Drill. Bob, thank you so much for joining us on the show. They say, and I, and I think this is very, very true in a lot of respects, that whoever they may be, uh, that it's a completely different ball game. It's a completely different athlete, student athlete now. But I suspect the desire, the enthusiasm that you had back in, in the 40s is just about on par with what you see right now. I think that the big difference, Tom, in the way they play football uh, in 2000 and the way we played it in the 40s is that we had to go both ways. Uh, when they got the ball, we just shifted over and played defense. And uh, so you had to kind of pace yourself because you knew you had 60 minutes to go. See, we just played about, I would say, 16 football players we had a squad probably of oh, 40, but 16 did all the playing, and uh, unless they got hurt, and then someone else had to stand in. But uh, that made a difference. Going both ways makes a big difference. Now, athletes could do it today uh, if they had to, but fortunately, uh, it's not necessary. They have more coaches mm -hmm. now. How many coaches did you guys have? We had three. The head coach, Luca Baugh, the backfield coach was Jack Baker, and the line coach was Toby Green, who coached also the baseball team. And uh, that made a world of difference. Now, in 1946, we did have an additional coach, but uh, for the most part, uh, during the time that uh, I would say the peak years, we just had three coaches. Back then, of course, you, uh, we flew a lot. Uh, traveling was a problem. For the first year or so, we traveled in just automobiles. We had enough people here in town who were interested in the football program that they would take four or five athletes. Golly, you can't even get close to one now. That's right. I remember going through uh, Yale one time, stopping at a gas station, and there was Jim Thorpe pumping gas uh, at a gas station. And that's first time I'd ever seen him. Of course, at that point in time, we knew who Jim Thorpe was, but uh, he was a great one, of course. Uh, in 1946, we started traveling more. And I can't say, Tom, that the kids enjoyed the travel aspect. Uh, we would rather drive to Taft Stadium in Oklahoma City as we did in, in 1944 and 45, uh, when uh, gas was rationed and so on. And, and uh, it, we'd just jump on a bus, go down there and play and come home. And that wasn't a problem at all. The only trip I can remember that uh, was vivid in the minds of the players was the University of Texas in, I can't remember which year, it was 44 or 46, but we flew down and we landed at night and the lights went out at the airfield. So here we were up there circling. I don't know how much gas we had in the plane, but we had to come down sometime. We were either going someplace else to land they ended up lining up cars on either side of the runway 
And we landed, uh, the, not we, the pilot landed that plane with the uh, benefit of headlights, and that's all the light he had. Welcome to Austin. Huh? <laughs> yes, right. That's right. <laughs> and we think we have travel plans. That's plane. a heck of a story. You know, Tom, Bob Fiddlemore, uh, man of integrity, uh, a great friend. I like Bob, you know, he and his golf game, but a great alum. Uh, and, and really uh, uh, a great support of Oklahoma State football. We're going to have part two of our get-together next week. You know, a guy who probably could play both ways is going to join us on the player feature, Josh Lynn, that comes up after this timeout. Now it's time for the Big Time Sports Apparel Player Spotlight. Each week we feature the cowboy who typifies the big-time attitude to dig down deeper. This week's Cowboy in the Player Spotlight is Josh Lind. Congratulations. When you were big time, dig down deeper. I don't feel so. Welcome back to the show. And as mentioned, Josh Lind is with us. And could you play both ways like they did in the 40s? No, I don't think I could do that at all. <laughs> Tiger Woods, he thinks he is. Tiger Woods, yeah. right. <laughs> we appreciate you coming down to the show. And we talked to after the game uh, last night on the radio. And obviously, you guys did a lot of good things. The only thing, didn't finish your drives off when you had to. Yeah, you know, you get in red zone that many times and you don't you don't uh, score, it's going to hurt any team. And, you know, we really shot ourselves in the foot last night, and we need to bounce back from that and get ready for this next weekend. And they will. They will, uh, Tom. You know, the positive part uh, about what we've been done, been doing the last uh, three games is moving the football. Uh, and then we just got to solve the equation of when we get down to that area. Uh, to uh, execute a little bit better and then get, get points in, on the board. But, uh, you know, our kids are playing hard. Uh, as he said, uh, you know, last night was, was a disappointment. Uh, but, the, but the big part about it is that we have another game to play. Uh, we're 2-1, and one, uh, and, uh, and now our focus is really have to be Texas. Talk about the big fella. You've been all over the offensive front, haven't you? Yeah, played center, uh, <laughs> left tackle, right tackle, tight end. Is this the home? Do you like the home here now where you are? Oh yeah, I like I like right tackle a lot. I mean, left tackle is uh, premier tackle position, but you know I'm real comfortable with right tackle. Definitely. Yeah, you know, Josh pitches himself as a, came here as a big time tight end, and uh, <laughs> obviously the first year we had him, we actually put him at tight end for blocking purposes only. Yeah, I caught every right. ball. I caught every ball. <laughs> you caught every Did ball. Did we ever throw to you? Only in practice. I see. Yeah. You caught him though. Oh, you yeah. had a great practice record. <laughs> you guys are excited now. Big 12 conference play begins next week down in Austin. That always brings the players' level of emotion up. Definitely, definitely. Texas, uh, it's a huge game. Love, I love going down to Austin to play. You know, I've only played there once, but you know, you got to get excited when you play uh, the Longhorns. You know, they usually a really good team every year, and uh, I'm really excited. I know this team is too. I know. Before we let you go, one of the team leaders, one of the guys that others turn to. You like that role? Oh yeah, I love it. You know, I uh, wasn't even this role in high school, and getting put this role in college football, it's awesome. You know, I, uh, I'm really thankful for it. And, Enjoyed a lot. We're going to go back and check those practice stats just to see if you caught any <laughs> of those balls. We're going to go back to wrap it all up after this final timeout. Welcome back to the show. As Josh mentioned, we're talking with him. Big 12 season begins next weekend. The University of Texas, great place to play, great atmosphere. We're looking forward to going down there. Not that long a drive. Come on down and support the Cowboys and wear that orange. That's all the time we have for this week's show. For Bob Simmons, Josh Lynn, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.